This is E2900 week 9 lecture 2. So today what we'll do is we'll do the signal tap demonstration using exclusive war. So I'm going to cover the generic multiplexer because it's um, we'll rather focus on signal tap and get into the course review. Okay, but let's get started with this. So I've already created a folder called signal tap exclusive war on my C drive. So let's create a new project. And of, okay, signal tap is an in-system logic analyzer that you download with your design. So point number one, you obviously need the DE one board or any hardware platform to run signal tap. Point number two, excuse me, since signal tap is a logic analyzer, you need a clock signal. And in this case, we'll use the 50 megahertz clock. Usually, uh, and you will work, you will definitely use signal tap in 2902, sequential logic design. And usually the clock frequency must be at least twice the maximum frequency of your, of any, twice the maximum signal frequency in your design according to the Nyquist Shannon sampling theorem. Okay. So let's get into, okay, where did I create this? Let's see. Local disk signal tap exclusive war. Oh, there it is. Just couldn't see it. Okay. So let's type this out. In the sense, here's the name of the the name of the project is the same as the name of the folder is the same as the name of the top level. So here's next, next, uh, cyclone two. Oops, Cyclone 4 GX, Cyclone 2 AP Next, next, finish. Let's import the pin assignments. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to just create one top level file. File, new, let's create a VHDL file. And I'm going to just specify the exclusive OR gate using structural design. So uh, let's see. Oops, sorry, my tablet slipped. It was on my lap. And here, there. Use IEEE.StandardLogic1164.0. Uh, so entity signal tap, oops, XOR is port in the signal tap XOR, which is, so we need the clock. We're going to use the 50 megahertz clock. Uh, let's just use the switches, obviously, as inputs. Then the green LEDs as the output. Put a semicolon there. Architecture, structural of signal tap XOR oops, is begin in structural. And then let's just do LED G0 is SW1 exclusive or SW0. Oops, and then we need to save this in the correct folder. So let me do that. Um, and now let's just uh, oops. let's assemble the design directly. Hopefully it's simple enough. I didn't make any errors. And as it's uh, assembling the programming file, so if you go under tools to signal tap logic analyzer, well, let's uh, let it finish the synthesis procedure. And then there it is. Okay, so it should be pretty fast now. So anyway, once you open up signal tap, oops, and I did make a mistake. I think I know what that is, just looking at, just glancing at the error. And I misspelled structural. So 
moves again. Okay, good. And I also think this is successful. So I want to just the fit. It's okay. It can we can wait for the filter to finish. In the sense, this lecture is going to be really short. So let's go to tools, signal type logic analyzer, and this window pops up. So now uh, what we need to do is we haven't, it hasn't written any device, so we'll do that, we'll fix that shortly. But first, we need to, so the signal tap uh, logic analyzer is divided into a bunch of different windows. So here is the instance manager, it tells you how much, uh, the number of logic elements that your signal tap logic analyzer is taking up. Here's the data configuration that will become enabled once you plug in the DE1 or any of the development board. Now this here is a signal configuration for your clock where you can also specify the sample depth. Obviously, if you specify 128K, you need to make sure A, your FPGA has memory and B, the higher the frequency of your sampling frequency of signal, you're getting more data sample, you're getting data samples more often. So the more memory you need to see like more uh, transition details as opposed to a lower clock frequency in the sense when you're using I squared C in 2902 for example you don't want to use a 50 megahertz clock because your I squared C clock frequencies max out well they're we use 20 kilohertz they max out at 400 kilohertz so you're better off creating an 800 kilohertz clock and using that as your sampling clock for example Anyway, for now, we'll, okay, let's just address this window. Here is the setup window where you see what nodes you want to set up, what, what nodes you want to look at. And then in the data window, once you download this, once you download the logic analyzer and uh, the data triggers, you will see the data here. But first, let's set up the clock. So let's go into signal configuration. Uh, let's look at design entry all names. Let's just list that. So we're going to use the clock 50 megahertz put that in so that's that sample depth let's use 1k right uh, for example and then double click to add nodes let's just add our uh, oops. so pre synthesis let's just look at design entry all names oops list and then ledg0 well let's look at our W0 is W1, and then LED G0. So there it is, and then trigger enable. You don't want to trigger on the LED. You can trigger on either of these. Let's just trigger on switch zero. And the trigger condition, right click, and let's do a rising edge trigger. So that's that. Now let's save this, and it should add it to your project. So there it is, signal tap. You can create it, you can give it any name you want. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, do you want to enable signal tap? Yes. And then data, right now there is no samples. So uh, what I usually do is I go in here and change to time units and the period is 20 nanoseconds for your 50 megahertz clock. So it's more descriptive. You know, 1K of samples, 1024 actually. So now what we're going to do is we're going to connect our DE1 board. And let me do that online. That is as I have this powered up. Let me just connect the D1 board so you can see the changes that reach down here. Get the board out. 
Hopefully I have a USB cable in here. If not, I have to pause the lecture. No, I do. I have a USB cable. It is good. So let me open up one of the USB ports on my tablet. Right, it's connected, powered on. And then now what we should see is we should be so let's get in here, uh, set up, and there is the USB blaster, so you can double click on this. Oops, not that. On this, close, and so you can see that the USB blaster is ready. But then what we need to do now is if you save this, yes. We need to recompile the project. See how this has all become question marks now? That's because you're going to, the logic analyzer gets downloaded with your design. So you need to resynthesize and refit the project. And you should see in the messages here that signal tap does get added in. And you can see that stp, 1.stp file is added to our project. Do that uh, da, da, da. again. We have a lot of time in this lecture, so everything in entity not single tap. Sorry, and then it should be messages that show. And let's see if we can catch it. Single tap. Where is it? There it should show here as well that our memory goes up, but it's not. That's interesting. Well, let's just open up Signal Tap again you know, by double clicking on this STP file and make sure. The signal tap project has been added to our design. Okay, so again, this is why in lecture I don't use my tablet because my tablet is very slow. I borrow one of the students' laptop. So anyway, now uh, let's just get our design file here, this SOF, SRAM object file. So there it is. And uh, let's see. So waiting for JTAG. And it's still saying invalid JTAG configuration. What concerns me again is the signal tap is not being enabled. So let's go in here, hierarchy, let's look at settings, uh, signal tap to logic analyzer, enable. One thing you gotta do for signal tap is to get it to work, you gotta go to options. Course is busy. Processing internet connectivity, talk back options. You have to enable talkback. Yeah, it is enabled for signal tap to work. And our, yeah, so let me pause the lecture, figure out what's going on, and then we'll be right back. Okay, continuing. I have no idea what happened in the sense. Uh, so here, as you can see now, it's saying analysis this is generated signal tap to or debug node instance auto signal tap zero. So you should see his message. And where is it? so notice that we have we're occupying 3k of memory. So now it should work. Yeah, I have. That was interesting. So anyway, let's just uh, get this to work and call it a qu uh, quarter. As you can see, it does take some more time, and it should with the signal tap two. 
logic analyzer. Come on, finish. Vector is at 96%. And you can see the number of logic elements, combination of logic switches, they all correspondingly increase. This is all extra logic added due to signal tap. Okay. Okay, and while this is finishing up synthesis, so every time you make a change to your signal tap, because you add a node, you have to resynthesize the entire design. You or MSOE, we don't have the subscription edition of quarters, so you don't have um, incremental synthesis. And the fact that you have to resynthesize every time will take a toll as you go into your upper division classes, especially like 3921. So keep that in mind. Right now, let's open up Signal Tap. Double clicking on this. Okay, let's download it now. And hopefully, now it shouldn't say invalid. There, ready to acquire. There we go. And now, let's see. It's running, but it's waiting for the trigger. So let me just push the switch up. And then it's offloading acquisition. And you can see that the LED, well, if you switch this time units back to nanoseconds, you can see that there's pretty much no delay on the FPGA. I mean, you can zoom in and try to figure out if there is a delay. But for all intents and purposes, this one excludes war gate, there's no delay. Okay. But there it is. Uh, how do you use signal tabs? It's pretty powerful, okay? And that's about it for E2902. Good luck.